in such a narrow greeting here. So it's been quite a while since I filmed a story time, which is honestly a shame because I still have like this whole list of stories from travels and especially from Russia that I have to go through. But this one I decided to share today isn't even, you know, from then. It's very, very recent. So let's get right into that. If you've been following my channel for a longer time, you know that last summer I actually bought a drone. But in the meantime, I used money I didn't have to buy myself a drone. Now the issue is, the reason I bought the drone for didn't ever come into fruition. It was meant for a lot of Germany trips that never really happened. And then about a week ago my best friend came over and we, you know, started filming a lot of the locations I meant to film a year ago. And while it will need a while for these videos to come out, trust me you're gonna look forward to that because the material we filmed was amazing. Including for example this castle ruin, which I have some of the best drone shots from I ever took so far. But I digress. So on the last day, we had a lot of castle ruins on our list. And basically what we always did is we just drove there, parked there. I got out of the car, started my drone, flew over the castle a few times and then we went on to the next one. Especially because we had so many things on our list, we had to be kind of quick-ish. And I think it was the second location of the day where at first everything seemed to go fine. And then suddenly the drone started going about 2 meters per second into a direction I didn't even push it towards. And it didn't stop, it just kept going. For a second I thought it was just a connection issue, because a lot of the time the signal is really weird, even though the drone is really really close. And therefore I didn't think much of it. But once it was about 200 meters away, I started getting worried, so I tried pushing it back. And nothing happened, it didn't react to anything I did. So Stefan's first suggestion was just try to call it back, which I did. But all that did was it went up to 85 meters, which is double as high as it was before, and then it started getting driven away even quicker. So that was quite worrisome, and I frankly had no idea what to do about that. So I started panicking, as you can imagine. I turned the camera first towards the castle, so we could kind of at least tell in which direction we were, because frankly we had no idea. And then I started turning it to the road, to just figure out where we could even remotely be. And seconds later, the drone went, 10% battery, landing now. And I stood there being like, what, what do you mean landing now? No, you're in the middle of a forest, you, n no. But there was no stopping that, so. Yeah, it started landing and a few seconds later than that, the connection was gone. And I was in very big panic mode. Now the lucky thing is, when it loses connection, it seems to send a portion of what it just filmed to the phone. So we had this very grainy, like 20 second clip, with a lot of chumps in between. I'm gonna show you the material right now. It, it did look way worse than it does right now, because this is the quality material. But we had basically just this random ass road to go off. We knew that in a direct line it would be about 600-700 meters away. That's also a bit helpful, but not really that much. So then I gave Stefan just my phone and he started looking on Google Maps, trying to figure out where remotely the drone could be. And then we started driving there. And we drove into the forest that said you can't drive into there unless you're a forest worker. I'm not sure if that's a thing I should admit to on the internet, but it just did. And because there were forest workers in the forest, we couldn't really drive where we wanted to be. So just a few hundred meters into the forest, we parked somewhere. I started walking straight into the forest, hill down, <laughs> just to the location that Stefan has pinpointed. And we were really insecure if we were in the right place. So after walking there for a while, we then kind of thought to drive somewhere else. And... Just before we got back to the car, I took all my courage together, because I, I get actually quite anxious to speak to random people, at times at least, and I just asked the forest workers if they had any idea where that piece of footage could have been taken at. And funnily enough, the location Stefan pointed at was really close to where they thought the drone was, which meant we then backtracked and went again where we originally were headed to, until we found these three loops 
and we were really unsure at which of them the drone could have been. So we just picked the middle one and started walking through the forest and trying to find the drone. And we ended at this point where there was a cliff where you could see the castle from. And from there we kind of tried to measure if we are remotely in the right angle. But the camera on the drone has quite a fisheye so it doesn't really line up and it doesn't really make sense. And this is crucial because we were about to walk away into a different part of the forest. And then in the very last second before we left that very section, Stefan found the drone. And to this date, I wonder what would have happened if he wouldn't. Because less than 15 minutes later, there was really strong rain. And it's very likely we would have left the forest by then. And if we would have went into a different section of the forest, it's very likely we would have never found it. Which, you see, the drone isn't the most expensive thing I ever owned. It is, technically, I think, actually. But it's not, it's not the end of the world. But the thing is just, I did use it so little. That would be a shame to lose it, and I even bought this extra thing where you pay a hundred extra and you get two replacements, I think in the first year or in the first two years, I'm not exactly sure right now. If you, for example, fly into a house, into a lake, something like that, if you ruin your drone, basically. However, that is only covered if you can send them your broken drone. If we wouldn't have found it in the forest, there's no broken drone to send, so that would have been, first of all, pointless to pay. And additionally, the problem is as well, since this is not my job, I'm not making any money with this so far, I don't have the income to buy another drone. Which makes this a bit more dramatic for me than it would have been if this would be my job, I think, personally. What I learned from this fun experience, let's call it that, is that whenever my drone will start getting driven away by the wind, I know to call it down immediately. Not use the send back thing that puts it up, but just land it. Even if it's in the middle of the forest, I don't care anymore if it breaks down because, as I said, I paid for the thing to get a replacement anyway. I just don't want to be stuck in a situation where we can't drive 20 minutes into a random ass forest to find a drone. Because if we wouldn't have had a car, that drone would be gone. Like gone, gone. There would have been no way to even remotely get where it was really was in the middle of nowhere. So that's fun. There's also clips we filmed on that day where we tried to kind of, you know, film the story time in person around the location we found the drone at. Just to show you how well it flies in the wind here. Like it shouldn't, this, this should not happen. I'm not doing nothing. So that's the sign. But because of how strong the wind is and also how heavily the drone was like shaken even in this like very low high in the clip we have there, we decided to opt out of that and just not do that. I was not gonna lose my drone again. <laughs> Which is also the reason why I never filmed the castle properly afterwards. Even though we were in a really good spot to make like a flying towards the castle kind of clip, but. I knew something bad would happen, and I didn't want to take that risk. This was basically a way shorter story time than usually, and I'm in the midst of editing a lot of videos, because I filmed a lot in the past few weeks and months. Uh, so there's a lot to come very, very soon, and this is just, you know, a hint of me producing content again, let's call it that. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, story times I mean, or candy tastings, cooking videos, travel vlogs, commentary, hauls, unboxings, or just random shit I suddenly come up with, because honestly, let's face it, I'm a grab box channel, I would advise you to go check out the rest of my channel and see if there's more content you'd enjoy. And if there is, maybe just subscribe and stay up to date with all of my upcoming content. As a side note, I might be doing a little bit of makeup content in the future. I mean, you can probably tell that I'm starting to get a little bit into makeup, but that's a story for a different day. And until then, I hope to see you around next time. Bye.